Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you right now for this opportunity. I thank you for giving me this message to speak, Lord. Father God, I pray that this message brings peace. Brings peace to the hearts of those who are in need, Father God. Father God, I pray that this message gives someone just a little bit of faith, Father God. The faith that they need to push through, Lord, despite what they see right now, Lord. Holy Spirit, I acknowledge your presence. And I ask that you manifest yourself and have your way in me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So, for this message, um, which is titled, He is Enough, God is Enough, Jesus is Enough. Um, I'm coming from John 16, 33. And it says, this is the NIV version, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So I saw that word peace and I wanted to um, look it up. So I looked it up on Blue Letter Bible and um, the Greek word for peace is Irene. And the definition that they gave, um, they gave an, the definition in Christianity, the meaning behind it in Christianity um, it is. It says, peace is defined as the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot of whatsoever sort that is. So when we look at John 16, 33, Jesus warns us. He lets us know that we would face trouble. We would have trouble in this world. But in saying that, he also gave us, gave us assurance when he told us to fear not because he has already overcome the world. I like to think of it as a little insurance and a little insur a big insurance policy. Not only did he give us confidence in knowing that the battle is already won, but he instructed us to take heart. I like the King James Version. It says, to be of good cheer. He has already overcome. And knowing this, if we can rest assured of his promises, and we know that his love for us is unconditional, then I have to ask, why is our faith in him conditional? We trust him when life is good. Our faith in him is stronger than ever when things are going our way. But we struggle with our faith when the storms come. Did Jesus not forewarn us of the troubles that we will face? He didn't say that life would be easy and as believers we would never face tribulation. And I can honestly say, and I think that we all can agree with this, that this year has been difficult on us all. So many lives were lost, jobs and financial security gone. When we should have drawn closer to the Lord, we blamed him for our sufferings and drifted further apart. Our faith in him is hanging on by a thread. Instead of running to him during the storm, we run for cover and fault the father for not putting, excuse me, for not pulling us out. We took up some of us, not all of us, but some of us have taken our eyes off of him and we begin to focus on the storm because there seems like there's no way out. I believe that as a church, as a people, we have become so entitled Many of us believe that we are above having trials and tribulations. And because of that, we measure our faith off of our worldly possessions and our status in society. I think that as a church, especially here in America, we have it backwards. 
We say that we are believers and that we love Jesus. But truthfully, for most of us, these things are only true under certain circumstances. In actuality, most of us believe that it is through our faith we are entitled to health, to wealth, and prosperity. So when our health fails, when we lose our jobs, and when our money is spent, we say our faith is being put to the test. We question our faith, we question our God, we question Him. We stop believing the promise. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, it says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. In other words, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For God has said he will never leave you or forsake you. We have been deceived into believing that godliness is a mean to gain. But like Timothy, First Timothy says in chapter 6, I don't remember the exact verse, but it says, But don't you know that godliness with contentment is great gain? I really suggest that you go and you read First Timothy, especially chapter 6. Money comes and goes. Jobs are lost and found. Death in our earthly bodies is certain, but the word of God is eternal. His promises are unceasing, and salvation is everlasting. Don't focus on things of the world, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Do not be afraid. This is what the word says. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. He is, he is your helper. Take refuge in him. Don't take your refuge in the promises of security from our government. Today, I ask you to examine your heart. Examine your heart. If your faith is measured upon the troubles you face and by your worldly possessions, you need to reevaluate which God you serve. A second stimulus package is not your savior. Don't look for that. Instead, look to the savior, our Lord and savior, to provide for you. He is enough. I find it funny, not really funny, it's pretty sad, but it mind boggles me. And I do it myself when we face these trials that seem so big to us. And it makes us question, is God there for me? Does Jesus love me? And how we're, we're so um, hurt and we're so angry and we're so fearful. And then we have the nerve to blame him. It makes me think about our brothers and sisters in Christ who are being persecuted, who are having their, who are being beheaded women who are being raped, all for Jesus' namesake. People who have to flee from their homes in fear of terrorist groups. Give up their entire lives, all that they know. Leave their homes, leave their schools, leave their jobs, leave their businesses. They leave all things behind because they won't bow down. They don't know their future. They don't know what the future holds. I'm sure it's fearful for them. Their lives, literal lives are at stake, but yet they still believe. I think of the martyrs who were beheaded by terrorist groups. And I'm sure all they had to say was, I don't believe in that Jesus, but they didn't. They didn't. They held on strong to their faith because they know that Jesus is their Lord. And I sit here and I think how we, we would be if, if and when persecution ever came to our door. 
if having low funds, low money in the bank, our banks, bank accounts are overdrawn, if that causes us to question our faith, and we sometimes curse his name, how will you hold strong when persecution knocks at your door? Will you trust him? In 1 John 2.15, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Through Jesus Christ, we find our peace. We can't find our peace in things of this world, but our peace is found in him. For he gives us something that no man or woman can give, and that is salvation. Hold on tight to his promises, brothers and sisters. Trouble doesn't last always. It does not last always. I'm living proof. We are going to have troubles. We're going to face trials. But don't allow the things that you see, allow the things that you are going through to take you away from your faith and your Jesus. You see what is happening now with the churches, with the coronavirus and, you know, um, I heard someone say you're allowed to travel, but you can't come together in church. We may not face persecution, you know, as they do overseas. And while we still have our religious freedoms, hold on tight to the Father because he is with you. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Hold tight. Don't let your money, don't let your financial situation, don't let your job, don't let your health take your eyes off of the one and only true God. I read a quote in um, my woman's devotional Bible. I don't remember who, uh, who said it, but it said, I don't know how, but I know who. And we serve a great God who can do mighty things. And he can do mighty things. And he will deliver us, whether it be in our earthly bodies or in our heavenly, heavenly ones. But if he doesn't, if he doesn't, know that all things work together for the good of those who love him, who trust him, who believe in him. Hang tight, brothers and sisters. Hang tight. Please don't allow your circumstances to take your eyes off of the prize. We have the greatest promise. The victory is already won. It doesn't matter what happens to us here on this earth. It doesn't matter because this is not our final destination. Hang tight, brothers and sisters. Jesus loves you, and so do I. God bless you all. I pray for peace in your coming and your going. I pray the blessing over your life, over your family's life, over your children's life, their children and their children. God is for you. He is with you. He loves you. Be blessed.